Hi, I'm Rob Nazi. I'm the curator of North American Botany at New York Botanical Garden, and I'm thrilled to be here with Lily and very grateful because I'm seeing one of my favorite plants. This is Saracenia rosea, and some people call it the Gulf Coast pitcher plant, and it is very, very closely related, in fact, as sister species to the more northern and more familiar Saracenia purpurea, but it differs because it has a much wider lip, actually thicker, so the, it has thick lips, and they bend out, they curve more, and then when it's in flower, the scapes are only about this tall. But anyway, it's one of the, um, it and purpurea are the only members of the genus Saracenia that collect rainwater. And the reason for that is because the hoods are erect, so they leave open this mouth, and so rain falls in, and that, of course, is part of the digestive process for the plant, being able to trap their prey in that pool of water. And so for a long time, this was lumped in with purpurea, correct? That's, that's right. For yeah. a long time, it was considered Saracenia purpurea. Purpurea was thought to have this gigantic range. It still does. But when I was in graduate school, I discovered morphologic differences. But what led me to it in the first place was the mite that's symbiotic inside this species is a different species than the mite that's yeah. in purpurea. And each one of those mite species is restricted to the respective plant species. So when I realized I had a different mite, I wanted to take a closer look at the morphology and I ended up finding many, many differences. So what's really exciting in this place is we have other pitcher <laughs> plant species. So here's Saracenia flava, the yellow pitcher plant. And you can see it's erect, and it has the hood that is deflected over mm -hmm. the mouth. There's the to mouth. To prevent rainwater. To prevent rain. rainwater, because if this filled with rainwater, it would be so heavy. It would mm -hmm. be top-heavy. You can yep. see it's wider at the top, narrower down. Mm -hmm. It would flap over. Yeah. So it actually would be counter-adaptive. It would be maladaptive mm -hmm. if this filled with rainwater. So that's Saracenia flava. We saw mm -hmm. Saracenia rosea. And then, in this place, we have the hybrid. We yeah. have Saracenia flava times rosea, and that was named subsequent to my work on describing rosea. And what's especially convenient for us right here is that it sits right in between. It's in the middle between yes. flava and rosea over here. And that's how hybrids happen. Yeah. So Saracenia is naturally... Um, very prone to hybridization between species, right? Absolutely. In fact, all of the species are interfertile, mm -hmm. and even their offspring will be fertile. So what's been found in a few studies of hybrids is usually the hybrids have reduced fertility, but they are completely fertile, um, and they produce viable pollen, for example, so they can back cross. And in some areas, we get back crossing introgression, as we mm -hmm. call it, and hybrid swarms that form. So it's interesting, and a lot of people focus on the hybrids themselves. But the parents, even different Saracenia species that do not naturally grow together, they've been hybridized in the greenhouse, mm -hmm. and they're fully compatible, yeah. so they form hybrids. So yeah. in horticulture, a lot of people are breeding them to produce hybrids and select for certain strains. So that's a, an active area of horticultural development at this time. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't mention, but this hybrid is named after you. It is. <laughs> so when I was doing the work on Saracenia rosea, I realized that the hybrid would remain without a name. And I like to name species. Um, I like to refer to hybrids by their combination. So mm -hmm. it was someone after me who had named it. And mm -hmm. the reason it was Larry Melichamp. Larry named it Saracenia Nazii, and he did that because he felt that the contribution I provided in recognition of Rosia was, was worthy. That was his decision. Nice. That's a great legacy to have. Yes, it's, it's quite an honor, and I feel like I'm not really worthy of it, but <laughs> I'm continuing to study Saracenia. So what I'm doing these days is there are many unanswered questions that are fundamental to the history of the family how did we end up with three disjunct areas, each one corresponding to a different genus? Mm -hmm. So we have Saracenia that occupies southern, eastern, and northern North America. 
Then in the Pacific Northwest, so in California and Oregon, we have Darlingtonia. Mm -hmm. And then in Northeastern South America, we have the third genus, Heliamphora. Mm -hmm. They do not come together. Yes. So a lot of questions. Were the ancestors, when they were diverging, were they all together? Or was there a long distance dispersal event that led to the separation and genetic divergence and then the genera evolving? Mm -hmm. Or was there some combination? So that's a mystery. But one of the ways that I'm tracking that, and the another mystery is the origin of the family. What's its ancestral home? What's its birthplace, mm -hmm. so to speak? The family's home, mm -hmm. its birthplace. So I'm addressing those questions by looking at these mites that are symbiotic, oh. that live in the pitchers. Because okay. the mites have a lot of really beneficial characteristics that help with answering these kind of questions. One of them is the mites live in a fully aquatic situation, if it's mm -hmm. something like Saracenia rosea, or at least in a water film. Mm -hmm. And when they leave the pitchers, they dry very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're found in every species that has ever been sampled, which is almost of all of them. The whole family Saracenia. The whole family okay. is suggestive that the divergence, the spread of the family was through a process that we call vicariance, mm -hmm. meaning that formerly it was a continuous distribution and then subsequently there was fragmentation of the range, mm -hmm. quite likely by aridification, drying out of mm -hmm. habitats. So in North America, for example, we find this huge gap in the range of the family between the West Coast and the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And it's quite possible when the Rocky Mountains rose and cast the range shadow and we got the development of the Great Plains, that there were populations that went extinct. Mm -hmm. We don't have fossils, so we mm -hmm. don't know, but these mites are helping us address some of these long-standing questions. An another question that's long-standing is, even after three recent studies of the phylogeny using the latest techniques of molecular systematics, and I'm a co-author on one of those papers, we have three papers, but three very different answers, oh. three different results. Wow. And so the mites, can be used to help address those, to basically use an alternate independent data set to test these hypotheses of mm -hmm. relationships. So for example, one of them mm -hmm. is that Saracenia purpurea plus rosea mm -hmm. are sisters to the entire rest of the genus Saracenia. Okay. And the mites do support that one. Mm. So that was one of the studies. The other two studies said no, purpurea and rosea arise from within Saracenia, well up within the, mm -hmm. the genus tree. So the mites don't support that. They support that purpurea and rosea are sisters to okay. the rest. They're very different. They are very different. And what's interesting is they're more like the other two genera in many ways. So they Oh have, yeah, they're they much more similar in breeds. appearance even to Heliumphora. Absolutely. So doesn't Saracenia purpurea occur on the West Coast or was that introduced? That was introduced. Okay. So I know a lot of, I call them Johnny apple seeds yes. of the pitcher plant world. Yeah. I know a lot of um, carnivorous plant enthusiasts who have intentionally introduced these plants, not just Saracenias, and actually it's caused great damage in some places. So mm -hmm. for example, Saracenia, Purpurea is an invasive species, believe it or not, wow. in many parts of Europe, especially oh, wow. the United Kingdom. I didn't realize that. So but... in Ireland and in England, there are bogs where people have gone in and tried to get them out because it's mm -hmm. taking over. Yeah. Wow. No natural checks and balances. No. Lily, you asked a great question about how is it possible that Saracenia sitocina, the parrot pitcher plant, mm -hmm. catches prey when it's submerged versus something like Saracenia rosea, which really does not get submerged. So mm -hmm. the key is in the interior of the pitcher. Mm -hmm. You see these long hairs? Yes. I'll try to angle that. Ah, yes. They go all the way up mm -hmm. to the mouth of the pitcher. They're fairly sharp. They're, they're right. sharp, mm -hmm. they're long, they intermesh in the pitcher. So there's the mouth mm -hmm. and you can see they're the full length of the tube. Yes, look at all that. All the way up and down. Yeah. However, in Rosea, you can see that ah, yeah. the, the long hairs are restricted to the very base oh, okay. in this pitcher where it's dark. Mm -hmm. So instead we get this waxy slippery part, mm -hmm. slippery um, for prey falling in. Yes. But what's really exciting is this one, the Cytosina that mm -hmm. is in its posture like this versus Rosea like that, 
they have completely different ecologies. Mm -hmm. And this one typically is in wetter spots, mm -hmm. slightly wetter, but yeah. it can get submerged. Yes. So how does it actually digest the insects underwater when it's so diluted with so much water? That's the... What's been discovered in Saracenia across the whole genus is almost all the digestion is by bacteria. Okay. So they decompose oh, within them. Okay. <laughs> um, so they decompose inside the pitcher. Bacteria break them down. The arthropods that live inside, the mites, <laughs> the mosquitoes, the midges, they wriggle through the prey, and that allows bacteria to enter the prey more quickly, okay. and thus the decomposition okay. proceeds faster. So there's a mutualism in Okay. That. Mutually beneficial. Yes. For the arthropods, they have a home and they have food, and then yes. the plant has. And that's digestion. essentially what's happening in here. Yes. All the time because exactly. this is catching it has a pool rain. Of water yes. Because the hood is yes. erect. Mm hmm. Whereas the hood here is enclosed. Yes. So this does not catch rainwater, but mm -hmm. it can, as you pointed out, get submerged and okay. fill with water. Yeah. The usual way is not to be submerged, but it's possible. Yes. And they do get submerged often enough. Yeah, I definitely see, have seen them submerge.